Hey guys, and welcome to Unofficial Sisters. It's your host, Little B. And there is no Samantha this week. Um, unfortunately, my aunt and her, her mom uh, broke her shoulder at work. So Simi had to miss this week. Um, but we have a special guest, a little felon, which is my mom. Hi, everybody. She was nice enough to fill in for Samantha. Um, I think Samantha might be gone for next week as well. Yes. Uh, due to taking care of her mother. So I might have my best friend Brooke here, which will be super fun. Um, so as Samantha always talk about, and as we always do, how was your week? Busy. Work is crazy. Always. <laughs> Found um, out one of my friends has COVID. Ooh. Yeah. I did not know that. That's news to me. I just found out tonight when she texted me. The one that starts with the J? Yes. Ooh, ouch. Um, eh, yeah, my week was boring. <laughs> <laughs> you, it's, it, her and I, like, we live together, so it's like you kind of know my week. <laughs> Sam and I actually have like, a little catch-up we can actually do. Um, my week was pretty boring. I mean, it's the same old, same old school. I finally finished my first project for that for my After Effects class, so that's finally done. And I think the the teacher lied to us. She said it's only sixty eight pages, but chapter three went all the way to page eighty four. Wow! Have you already got tested on it yet? I mean, have you already gotten your scores back or? Uh, she said that she'll have all tests in, all grades in by Monday. Awesome. She's kind of going through the list as we go down. Um, I was supposed to go to my teacher's studio uh, to uh, well, the day we're recording this, but my kids are like, nope, 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 yeah, nope, nope. <laughs> because of COVID probably or yeah. just busy, and so we had to reschedule it. And you know, this week I actually have been doing the best on getting school work done. Like I'm getting school work done. That's the problem with working at home. I'm definitely not as productive as I probably should be because sometimes it's some, especially with the filming classes, it's like. Well, it's harder when you're at home, too. It's like you need that interaction from other kids and yeah, on the college campus. It's easier. Yeah. I uh, officially am probably, I'm, I'm taking a break from TikTok. And I'm actually going to try a different platform that's like literally TikTok, but um, is different. <laughs> I found out huh. through, through Repairman67, a.k.a. Christian. He did a lot of kink talk on TikTok, but then TikTok, you know, has all these guidelines now and all these rules, and he basically kind of got shut down, and he had to make oh, more, no. he, had, he has to make more basic, just kind of like trendy kind of videos on there, and a new app called Clapper has come up, which is literally a remake of Musical.ly TikTok, like, literally is the same app, um, but they don't have all the harsh guidelines and all of that, they're going to let people do what they want, um, and I th- I'm following him on there now, just on there looking through his stuff. And I'm thinking, maybe I'll try out a different app to get a little popular. Because I have a small following on TikTok. I have about a thousand people on TikTok. That's small? Yes, that's very small. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. <laughs> that's very small on TikTok. Um, and so I'm thinking, maybe I'll try a different app and see if I can pop off somewhere else. Make it known you switch and probably have everybody switch over from TikTok too. But I, I mean, I, I, I only have like 1,000, like 1. K or 1.4K. So nice. Not that much. It's pretty small. I have none. <laughs> <laughs> we, I just reached over 200 followers on Instagram. That's amazing. It took me forever to get popular on Instagram. I had to remake my Instagram. Yeah. Due to reasons. I had to delete all my Instagram posts and then I wanted to redo my name on YouTube and I wanted to like, change things up, so. I had to re refine all my fans again on Instagram. Uh-huh. So we're getting Don't come back. Let's get back. I know I'm so close to two thousand on YouTube. We're, nice. We're getting places. Um, oh, this week I found out I got an email from Robert, which is one of the, I guess, view counters on YouTube. They kind of the ones that send up emails. You know, they're kind of up there. And I found out my main channel, Lily Mason, ju- this channel, guys, we finally reached 
over 70,000 views. Ooh, nice. That's a lot of views. Yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching my video so consistently. Mm -hmm. um, <sighs> so Don't forget me when you're rich and famous, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm trying to think of like what's popular right now. Well, you probably don't really know much about this person. Probably don't really care about this person. But did you hear that Jeffrey Star got put in the hospital? No, for what? He he got into a car accident and his car flipped three times. Oh no! Is he okay? Uh, I didn't see. I didn't watch the full news article. Um, but there was a whole thing off of I think Clever, which I mean no one likes Clever Styles anymore. But they made a whole video on uh, Jeffree Star. It's now in the hospitals all over Google and Twitter. Hashtag oh. get better, Jeffrey. Apparently he got into a car. Something happened to his car. I'm curious what car. Because that man has over like four different kinds of cars. And he has his Lambo. doesn't matter which car. His Tesla. His Rolls Royce, his Tesla, his Lambo, his convertible, his G-Wagon. G Was he driving? I don't when know. he flipped it? Or? I think so. I think he... I mean, he could have had his his Uber, his personal chauffeur be driving. I don't know. All I know mm. is that his car was, was flipped three times and he's in the emergency room. Ouch. But she's like, I'm worried about those dogs. He has over, like, I think it'll take like, ten dogs and he lives with. I'm sure he's got people that will take oh, care of Oh, yeah, his manager is in the system. Yeah, I'm sure of that. He's pretty popular. Yeah. So I found that out, like, yeah, last night. I was just like, oh, no. That's not fun. Yeah. I don't have anything new except for the one gal at work who doesn't live here in Washington State. She actually lives elsewhere. Got COVID. That sucks. Yeah. She, and she got all the symptoms, not just one or two. Not just the fatigue and cold like symptom of respiratory. She got all of them. I mean, like, can't everything. breathe, can't, you know, can't breathe. Vomiting yeah. to Ooh. everything. Like she was in the ER. Yeah. Major big time. Mm. I don't know how you and I haven't got it yet. Because you and I keep going in public. I don't want to get it. Neither do the masters. <laughs> I don't want <laughs> no, I don't want to get it either. Because, like, obviously. I don't want to get it. Um, but I just know that through all the phases, you and I always went out. Even through phase one, who tried to go out. Like, we were just not smart. <laughs> Evidently, we were okay, though. I mean, we kept ourselves protected and kept away from people. And, and it's, it's another one of, like, how did, how did, how did we make it's it this It's kind far? of scary to think, you know. Like, how did we make it this far without catching it? Well, she, they've been out looking for houses to buy, and maybe they just ran across somebody who happened. And I know that she takes care of his grandchildren, and maybe they brought it in. Who knows? Mm -hmm. And it could have just started out as allergies, and that's, I think that's what she thought. Yeah, it's easy for that to go through when you're like a low immune system already. But then when she like spiked a really good fever, and so yeah, made a difference. I'm glad my immune system was pretty heavy. Yeah. Um, I think we've been pretty careful though. We wore masks from the beginning. I'm, you know me. I'm Mrs. Paranoid. I know. I go into a restaurant and I'm like drinking under my mask. Yeah. <laughs> You don't take your mask off even in a restaurant right? <laughs> until you start to eat. I don't need a mask off when I'm in the car sometimes. Because I've gotten so used to having it on, it doesn't even phase me. And it's really hard to hear you too sometimes. Because um, like at school on campus, even when you're outdoors, even though there's no one around you, if a teacher happens to catch you without a mask on, you can be like asked to permanently leave campus. Expelled. Yeah, like you can really get in trouble. So it's become such a habit just to always have one on. Well, you have to if you're in public transportation. At yeah, all. Like, and I ride the bus so much. And you whistle like, up to the mall and everything. Yeah, yeah you had to kind of I, protect yourself. Back in the beginning, it gave me anxiety, but now it's like second nature. Yeah, I don't like it because I get too hot. Well, and also a content creator who I really, really enjoy. He goes by K on the internet. Um, he said that back when he did a lot more traveling, he went to Asia, and masks were like, it's actually like normal. Because the air quality is so iffy. Different. It's different. Yeah, it's so iffy that you just, fa masks were just a part of fashion over there. So it's like, for him, this was kind of cool because it was like, I just get to wear it on a mask. It hides your pimples, hides your facial expressions. And you can be in your, yeah. you, you can be under your bus going, you stupid idiot, and no one's going to know. Yeah. You know, you can, you can hide Well, they're not emotion. here, so they're actually back east, and I don't know if they're still in the mask or not. I, I don't mm. know. Yeah, I, I don't know how she got it. I'm very curious how New York and all of them are doing because I know they got hit hard way back. Well, last she's year. actually in Ohio, so mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, I th 
they, but she's def- they've definitely quarantined themselves probably the last month. They haven't been out at all. Like, I know, like, I don't really watch them anymore, but I used to watch a couple, Mariah and Bill. I kind of go back and forth and watching them who were in Chicago, and it seemed like they didn't wear a mask very much. But then they just recently, they just recently moved to Florida. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how bad it did those other places, but she happened to get it, and I just found out today. Yeah. I just kind of reached out to her and said, hey, missed you at work. What's going on? And she was just telling me. Yeah. I'm sick. Yeah. She said, remember last week, and I was really sick, and she was. Last week, she was really, I talked to her a couple times on the phone. She Mm -hmm. sounded horrible, and she said they went into the doctor on Friday because she was off sick, Mm -hmm. and they were tested positive for COVID. That's kind of a very scary moment. And then she ended up in the emergency room on Monday with IVs and antibiotics, and yeah, the whole yeah, very scary. Her and her significant other are both. He, he's just got the upper respiratory fever fatigue. She's got nerves and else. <laughs> he can't know if they're married or not. She's like, oh, they're, not, they're not <laughs> married, but I know they're going to get married. They're like engaged. Fiance. Yeah. Yeah. It's fiance. Do you say that for both partners? Yes. Okay, so there's like no girl term for it? No. Fiance is for both. I always wonder though, like, is there a female version of that? or No. It's <laughs> just a fiance. It's on both sides. <laughs> Um. Yeah, I'm excited though. My friend Brooks probably to get married in o- in October. That's exciting. I know I'm gonna be going there, and I she actually hired me as her secondary photographer. So she has a main photographer that she's paying you know decent money to. But uh, I I thought I would do it completely for free, and she was like, no, 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 I'll pay you. <laughs> she's like, hang on, no, I want I want you to be there and take the personal photos. So. I got myself a freelancing job other That's than what awesome. I do. Have you told your advisor yet? I haven't talked to him. I'm going to talk to him on Friday, um, Thursday. That's going to be me. He's going to be so happy for you. He's going to talk to him exciting. on Thursday uh, to do an update. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. I've gotten more freelancing jobs since starting college than I did before. Well, yeah, now that you have a little bit more experience in photography, it makes a big difference. People look for people like you. Because you can learn, you don't charge quite as much because you're still very much yeah. <laughs> a beginner. I know it better. I think you should go into the food world because you do amazing photos for food. <laughs> and I, I've looked into doing menu photography for sure. Definitely. <laughs> I think you'd be good at it. Um, yeah. Tomorrow I'm working. Oh, it's not tomorrow when you guys are hearing this. We're recording this on a Friday, by the way, guys. Um, so fr- Saturday, I have a job to do at six at the work. I love modding. I I love it. Like I know sometimes it, I definitely know that it gets in the way of family. Like I know that people sometimes, some people get very frustrated with me having to work or do all that. I only get but, frustrated when it cuts into our time. But I love it. Like I don't like I don't like the fact that sometimes it is you know just a random oh it's two p.m. and they're you know I don't love it. But in that context, because it can get very time crunchy if i feel my weekends i'm running in 10 different directions but i think olivia i really really care it's is saturdays busy blessing because saturdays are our days and it's been our day since you were very young since i was born <laughs> well since i was able older than that, since i was able to comprehend yeah yeah so probably three five. four five yeah kindergarten but i just, i love it though i love doing it and i, I love the friends i've made through it I think I love the fact how happy it makes you. And you definitely have a good group of people you're with. So. I love my friends. Yeah, what's not to love, right? I wish some of them lived closer to me. <laughs> There's two of them that live. Well, one of them that's in a more like in the community who lives here, and then one of the other content creators who actually lives here. I never give names, guys, because I hate name dropping. People who name drop to me really are just like out for clout, and it's, it's not good. Right, right. So, two of them do live here. Um, here in Washington, but not in Spokane, which, I mean, uh, but most of them live in California, New York, Canada, and I'm like, seriously? One of them lives in Paris. And I'm like, wow. And yeah, her name's Boreal. You guys probably don't even know who that is, so I could say that because she's not, well, she's just kind of one of the people that I know personally. She lives in Paris, and I'm like, I do only know her through modding. Oh, because right? she, yeah, she works for the same person I work for. And I'm like, you live in where? Can I come visit? 
They're like on different time zones and everything that we are. Mm-hmm. Different times all the time. I know, and I was talking to Brooke last night, um, just personal reasons that I will not get into. That's her story, if not mine. Um, uh, Kay uploaded a Patreon, and I was like, it's 3 30 in the morning, and I forget. Oh, wait, he's on cannabis hours. I think they're actually ahead of us. Yeah, they are. Like a couple of hours. Two or three hours. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, what? what? Oh, never mind. <laughs> he or doesn't live. He doesn't live over here. No. I don't know how far ahead they are, but I know some. Depends on the area. It varies depending on the area in which. Yeah. yeah. Where he sits at in mm-hmm. Canada. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just think it's interesting. I was like, it's three three. Yeah, but he was probably yeah. up because I know he works. Other than his you do. Patreon. And yeah, he's also a uh, literature English teacher. He has given us some slight hints on the grade area. He says that it's definitely not kids, but like he could not act on any flirting that the kids do because of age. And I'm like... So it's almost like high school. Like so what, seniors? Like seniors. Like seniors, like are we, yeah. maybe that, that the running start programmers? Oh yeah, well because I know you know, like, you know there's well because he always says that like, you know some of the girls flirt with him. There are girls that have grabbed his phone, put their number in his phone. Will flirt with him. Will very blatantly <laughs> flirt with him, and he's like, I'm not gonna ruin my life. I love teaching. So I'm like, what age group we're we talking here? Sixteen to seventeen year olds? Is eighteen know. and nineteen year olds to you because of your age? Weird? I don't know. Maybe it's because he's a teacher and you really teach your students. Yeah, that doesn't work. That's so just well. like a classic hot movie scene. Yeah, I know, maybe. <laughs> to seduce your teacher? It's like, that's right. Uh, yeah, I know. I've never had a teacher that I have a crush on. Really? All my teachers have been old or female. Old? No. It's not cute. Okay. <laughs> I've never had, I never walked into a classroom and was like, what? Oh. You're a yeah, teacher. Okay. All my teachers either were like, they're just women and they were just complete bitches. Or, or, <laughs> or they were older males, but they weren't like attractive older males. They weren't like a dad or like, it's like, ooh. It was just right. kind of like a, oh. The closest I ever got to maybe thinking a teacher was cute was Mr. Mills. Because he wasn't that bad off considering his and age. He wasn't old. No, he was always in like his 30s. That's not old. But, but maybe for a high schooler. But maybe old. for a middle schooler. Or middle school, yeah. I guess for a sixth grader, <laughs> yeah. He was ancient. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But like, I never had a crush on him. I was like, okay, well, he's not deep. I mean, he's not bad. Why don't I thought Bradshaw wasn't that bad either? Really? He was in his 50s. He was 56 when we were in school with him. He was? Yeah. Oh, I didn't think he was that old. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was yeah, like in know. his maybe mid thirties, no. maybe forty. Or something. He was in his fifties at that time. Oh wow! Huh. Yeah, I thought he was nice. I don't know. He just wasn't somebody I would be. He's one of my favorite teachers that you ever had. <laughs> he was a great person, but when it came to teaching, he sure had some rules. Yeah, you have to the type of classes and stuff that they oh, have. So I guess middle school kids are not always easy. I was handle. Super- you have to stay on top of it. I was very quiet. <laughs> yes, yes, you were. <laughs> <laughs> and as long as I think about, like, if those teachers saw me today in class, they'd be shocked. Or like, oh, I do at home. They'd be like, oh, "Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to our little girl?" <laughs> yeah, like you Mrs. White, quiet. Mr. Powell. He's like, "What happened to my knucklehead?" Yes, you were very quiet. Very quiet. You were very much of an introvert. Yeah. Now I'm an introvert with extroverted tendencies. I would say yes. That. I'm an introvert because I love being alone, but I have extroverted tendencies because I can come you across. Can. Mm-hmm. And very you have come out of your shell since probably high school. Yeah. I would say late. Probably not. When I started doing YouTube. School. Huh? When <laughs> I started doing YouTube. Yeah. Right about your <laughs> ninth grade year. Yeah. Or eighth, right, ninth grade year. Right. I started doing YouTube. About ninth grade, I started doing YouTube. Yeah. Beginning of ninth grade. You really came out of your shell at that point. I think you have to, though. YouTube is a hard thing, I think, because I'm not one to be in front of the camera. I, I really don't like that. That makes me very uncomfortable, but you just do it like it's second nature. It's like it's breathing. Well, I've been 
attempting to be on camera since I was like what nine? Nine. Yeah. Well, you did trying like for Hollywood, trying to get into Hollywood with auditions and stuff. Yeah, Which one of you guys in the comments asked me in one of my last videos about me getting into Hollywood? I did classes at Seattle Talent, um, and I auditioned for Hollywood. I did very. I did one small commercial for uh, the cereal pops, but I don't know if I ever made it to air. I don't know if it ever, I have no idea if it ever did. And like, it isn't easy. No, it wasn't. But YouTube's not easy either. But like, your, whole, just, your whole weekends were taken up and a I lot of back it. and forth. And but I loved it though, because like, in the context of like, I just love this business. I know. I have a burning passion for this industry. I know. It's been your dream since as far back as I've seen it. There's videotapes of me as like a baby, baby performing. Yeah, I know. Well, not a baby, baby, but. 8, 13, 14 months, you would stand up on that little exercising thing and just talk and your hand would be going and yeah, that was amazing. I've always been a little performer. you always been my little ham. <laughs> a ham is a performer. Somebody who likes to... It's a meat. A pig. No, no. That's not what it means. A ham is like a, a jokester, uh, somebody who's very laughing and a ham. Uh, not a pig, not a pork. Different. I'll have to have you look it up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, what's that noise? Are you going like this? And oh, you're hitting against the gift of my boyfriend. <laughs> I had that huge thing for him, for, for Mark. I forgot about that. Um, yeah. Did you, uh, I'm not sure, do you listen to the podcast? Um, I have listened to them. I listened to it more when I had my other phone because it had headphones. This one here is a little harder because I have to listen to it out loud. We're going to get a wire. I need to buy you a pair of wireless earbuds. That's it. I don't have a pair of wireless, so I can't listen to it. Like I used to listen to it. I need to get you a pair of Just beats. sitting out here, I put in earbuds and listen. But I need, I need to get you a set of beats. I've only listened to a couple of these. Sorry, guys. <sighs> Putting my the mic down. Um... Let me get you a pair of Beats headphones. Well, did you, uh, I think I already told you about some of the little fun controversies that have been going on. A little bit, yeah. We've had a little bit of conversation. <sighs> oh, gosh. The negativity. <gasps> did you hear what they're, tr they, what they are trying to make April, for April 24th? For what? And they're trying to make this as a national holiday on April 24th. Do you know what it is? No. They're trying to make, and I'm not kidding, I can show you, it's all over TikTok, it's an actual thing, they're trying to make April 24th National Rape Day. For one day, it's okay to rape somebody. Nah, -uh, that's yeah. illegal. It's against the law. It is. It's a real thing. I swear. I'll have to look that up, because I've never heard of such idiocy. It's all, here, I can show you on my phone right here. It is a, actually becoming a thing. I'm not exactly sure who started it. I think I would protest. There's so no way. Uh, there's no way people would accept that. The TikTok they can't make that national. No, I don't think so. Um, who said it in TikTok? It was all over TikTok. Um, April twenty fourth. That can't be, Brenda. That's a weird. What? Little bee. That's illegal. People go to prison for that. I don't know. Um, they're trying to make a campaign on Wednesday and April 24th for to talk about this because it's kind of gone viral no. about it being National Rape Day. It was all over TikTok. And I will protest that. That is so wrong. Um, I disagree. Highly disagree. Yeah, I, I highly object I'll to that. Do more research, of course, and show you because it's hard to find it on the first the first search, you know. Because I think they have it probably pretty hidden for reasons. But I said on TikTok, somebody talked to said, "Can we please just take a minute to realize what we're saying right now? That they're trying to they're trying to the world." Certain people are trying to make it so that for one day raping is okay. That's and never okay. 
and TikTok, and a lot of the men on TikTok are like, if I hear that this actually becomes a national holiday, and I hear that whoever scrapers and signs that paper, and I ever hear that a woman was touched on that day, I will come and I'll personally find you, and I will hurt you. I have so many men on TikTok saying that if they find out this happens and they hear anybody who got raped, the person who did it will be killed from them. Like, they have a collection of people saying, I will murder somebody. Can you imagine the rage if that happens? I, rage I saw place. that. And I'm like, there's no way. Not necessarily in humanity. I mean, I have no faith in humanity anymore. But there's no way the national, the government would allow that. I don't I don't think they'll ever make it. Because they made a law that is illegal. Why would they go against that for one day? It's always been illegal. It's not yeah. law. It's always been illegal. Why for one day would they go against that? Yeah. But... Humanity, I mean, I have no faith in humanity. At this point, we will go do anything for whatever we want, for our own, per- our own pleasures. If they think that they can get away with it, yeah. And I just saw that trending on TikTok, and I saw it trending on Twitter, and I'm like, no. We have not come to this. I don't follow either. Like, I'm never on TikTok, how about, and I don't have a Twitter, yeah. How about, like, know. National Anti-Rape Day? <laughs> how about that every day? Yeah. I mean, I know April is Sexual Awareness Month, which I love. But then to, right in the dead middle of the month, have it one day where you can go against it. It's like, no, I don't think. I will personally pass. come and murder you if you touch somebody like that. I don't think it'll ever pass. There's too many smart people out there that know right from wrong. People will go end up going dead if that happens because two people, yeah. two people have made the threat that if this becomes a thing, they are going to murder people. Yeah, I'm afraid there'll be a lot of rage that will come with that. Yeah, a lot of protesting. Yeah, especially those yeah. who have been a victim of it. And if you have been a victim of it, I am so, so sorry. And I thought that as soon as I saw that, I was so mad. I literally sent a screenshot to my boyfriend, and he's like, if they do that, I'm going to hurt somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Even my own boyfriend was like, that is so far messed up. That is messed up. That's, that's going too far. <laughs> Anybody with any kind of sense would know better. Ooh, sorry, guys, I'm getting a text. Speaking of my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I don't know if you saw that. I don't know if on the news yet. No, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to read your text. And normally, I don't talk when you're reading because you're always telling me to hold on. Well, because sometimes you're asking me what he said. And I'm like, hang on, let me, give me, let me read it first. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. But yeah, I just I just think it's insane. I just that is absolutely crazy. I just oh god, that almost angers me. And yeah, that's not even happening. And like I want to, I know I said that a lot of people are gonna go after men. I want to this. Okay, I know that TikTok really heavily like centered it as like only men rape women. No, I get that men no. get raped. I get that. Thank I know you. TikTok mm-hmm. really centered it as like if any man touches a woman, I'm like, how about the other way around? That that. Most of the time, though, I would say probably a good 75%. It's usually the women that end up being raped. I'm not saying men don't or boys. I'm saying that a lot of times it is, it is the women that that happens. Sorry, guys. My baby's texting me. Yeah, I... I I've... And I, I, this is just how innocent I guess how sheltered I've been. I've never heard of a man being raped, but I know it happened. Obviously, it's happened. Like, yeah, if you if you think, okay, even if it's a little boy, those little boys turn into men, mm-hmm. and then they, they was they were still a boy, and it, it happened to them. So if it can happen to a little boy, it can happen to a man. Yeah, I, I, women I, can be very vindictive too. They can do date rape and they can do things. I mean, yeah. you don't hear about it. Men definitely don't come out as often as women because it's a very shameful thing, and yeah. they just don't feel that they can knock on wood. I have never experienced that, and I anyone who ever does never. When I hear stories of people who have, I'm always just like, oh, oh, I can't even imagine what that is like. Well. Yeah, you've been very protected your world. I would kill somebody if they touched you. <laughs> and I trust my boyfriend very, very yeah, much. I agree. He would that he would kill somebody. Oh my god, my boyfriend would be like, 
Yeah, he'd have to stand in line because I'd be first. <laughs> so I think my aunt, my stepdad, my yeah. cousins, my uncles. Yeah. I'd be like, you'd see a whole army of people behind me. <laughs> yeah. But that wouldn't change how you would feel, though, in the end. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, because it's a I, don't, bunch. I don't worry about, like, my boyfriend being an issue. Um, yeah, no. I don't either. Because Mark and I are, he's such a sweetheart kid. He is. And he wouldn't put a finger on me without consent. He wouldn't harm you in any way. He, he's got and, a very kinder spirit yeah. about him. And he, if you ever want, what? <laughs> when he touches, it's all, can I touch you? Can I, can I, can I, can I? It's always, you know, the mother may I kind of say. Yeah. And he, very respectful. He respects you. And very respectful of who's around as well. Yes. I'm sorry, I keep kicking that. What? 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 <laughs> <It's> like, um, <laughs> yeah. I just, I just saw that trending, and I'm like, no, no, no. no. Humanity, please tell the me. The controversy that that will cause. Oh man, and the anger. Yeah, I don't see it ever passing. <laughs> even, even Congress and oh, they know right from wrong. They know better. And I said that to, is so illegal. I said it to Brooke in the Snapchat that I got back. <laughs> I can only imagine. She's very passionate. Very outspoken about that. <laughs> She's very passionate in the topics and yes. Um, I'm gonna send a video to my boyfriend. So guys, can you hear this video? I'm sending to my boyfriend. Ooh, it's really dark. It is really dark. I thought uh, you could turn on the light when you came in, but you didn't. Oh, I didn't hear you. Sorry. It's all good. Here. Um. So it's actually a 30 minute mark. So. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break for an ad. Again, as always. As always, thank you so much to Athea Skincare for sponsoring this podcast. I do know personally that skincare is one of the most important kind of care to have. And we all have bad problems with our skin. We all have our things we don't enjoy. Athea Skincare has worked extra hard to ensure that they create a formula that is beneficial for all types, whether you're oily, dry, breaking out, or even young to old. There is something there. They are non-GMO. They are organic, vegan, and non-cruelty. They work extra hard every day to ensure new amazing products and that all products are beneficial. They've come out with new amazing lip balms and bath products as well. If you would like to shop at Athea Skincare, use the link in the description below or the code on your screen at checkout to get 15% off your entire purchase at Athea Skincare. And I promise you, it will be amazing. Thank you to Athea Skincare for sponsoring and let me be a bastard of this company as I truly believe they have skincare done correctly. Now, enjoy the podcast. Okay. And welcome back to Unofficial Sisters. <laughs> it's your host, Little B. And Little B's mom. And again, there is no Sammy today. Uh, once again, shout out to my Aunt Lori. Hope you feel better soon. Get your shoulder fixed. Yes. Um, these are orthopedic next week. And we were talking about National Rape Day. No. <laughs> Not cool. Uh, no. So I thought <laughs> that Mom and I could do an updated Get to Know Us tag. If you guys follow me on this channel, you've been on this channel for a while, or you've done some binge watching, you would know that years and years and years ago, <laughs> I was probably like 15 or 16. Mom doesn't do the camera. We did a, a, a mommy and daughter, like get to know my mom kind of tag, mommy and daughter thing. Um, and I thought we could redo it. Sounds good. We can answer some different questions, answer the same questions, all that ish. Uh, I'll leave the link to the original tag that we did decades ago, last decade, um, in the description so you guys can check it out. So, you ready? To I'm ready. Be quizzed? I think so. <laughs> um, what was it like as a child? Uh, very quiet. Very, very quiet. Very shy. Um, you were a good kid. I really had no trouble out of you at all. So you got older. You got your little quirks, but I mean, for the most part, you were a good kid. You would talk and play just like any other typical kid. But you, when you got people to come around, you would get very, very quiet. So I got older, and now she's like, shut up. No, I don't think that. You are so quiet when people come around, depending on the person. You are, depending on the person. 
a lot of times you will come in your room and people don't see too much of you. Totally Unless nice. it's Brooke or Mark or Lily or somebody like that. So a friend. Yeah. Some, yeah. A boyfriend, of course. Well, usually if it's Brooke or Mark, they're in here with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially if it's Mark. We're definitely in here together. Yeah. Um. So, I, I mean, I feel like I got more to be a trouble child when I got older. Nah, like now. Not until you were probably 16. Did you really start... I wouldn't even say you, it's not like you're in trouble. It's not like you leave and do drugs and, you know, sneak out at night. No, you weren't. You're not like that. I think that all teenagers have this little attitude towards their parents. And sometimes that kind of shows through for you. Now you have a taxi. Yeah, now you probably should use your phone. <laughs> <laughs> now you're texting me. Jeez, baby. Um... Take it where you can. I know, right? <laughs> uh, what do you think of me making YouTube videos? Were you scared when you heard that maybe I was making the wrong kind of videos? I think at first I didn't think about it. But then as people were talking, I was like, hmm, I'm hoping she's not putting that information out there. But now I just think it's awesome. I think that it takes kooks, but kooks, but how do you say that word? Don't know oh, that it's, is a word. It's a, it's a it takes balls. Exactly. <laughs> it takes a really unique kind of person to get in front of the camera like that. Um. So you never worry about me being like a porn star. Um. No, because I think we were raised better Way than that. Way too self conscious. Very self conscious and raised better than that. You know right from wrong, and I really don't see you putting yourself out there like that. Hmm. And I really don't think Mark would appreciate it either. <laughs> No, I don't think you're really that. the idea of the million other It's different if it's it. just him and you, but when you're putting the world into that, yeah, that like makes it a whole About 20 thing. billion other guys in the world could see it. I think if I ever saw it, I'd be very disappointed in you. I couldn't stop you because you are old enough, but. Almost, almost 20. Oh my gosh, I'm old. I did worry about it, though, when you turned 18. Well, I can do whatever I want and kind of do that, but I think that you were raised better than that, and I just have to trust I you. I think I had one rebellious moment. And it made my mom scared and then flicked the rest of my life. Yeah. I did one rebellious thing as an 18 year old. Like, I'm going to do this one thing, get out of my system, yeah. and go back to normal. And ever since it's then, never gone to normal she's yeah. like, you're not going to do that, right? You're not, you're not serious, right? And I'm like, yeah. as self-conscious I am wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> like, well, I can't I even wear certain shirts. Me. I can't even wear certain shirts without being like, mm-hmm. I know, but you've done a couple of things. Thing. I can think of that was super rebellious. Yeah, that going to Starbucks at 3 o'clock in the morning. That's really rebellious. You never did that before. And I've never done it since then. That was fun. I mean, that, that's, that kind of scared me. I couldn't even get to you. You were like thousands of miles away. That's from in the me. whole of the state. And that's why you did it. Because I yes. wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was not under any kind of power of control. I was my own power of control. Uh, was something funny it is when I was younger. That the audience would never believe unless they were there. Something funny? Yeah. Or something, well, just, or something in general that I ever did. I think I think I don't I didn't think it was funny and I was curious at the time, but everybody else thought it was funny. I had told you to give me a kiss tonight, to roll over there and give me a kiss, and you let out a whopping part and turned around and said, There's your kiss, Mom. I didn't think that was funny at the time. I think it's hilarious now. <laughs> and were, were we on my aunt's house in SeaTac on the air matches? Yes. And my yes. uncle had been around. So like Uncle yes. Scott, my Aunt Wendine, my Uncle Bo, everybody yes. was laughing. Oh my gosh, girl, I can't believe you just did that. And mom was like, I was furious. <laughs> Are you kidding me? My mom was like, one, <laughs> two. <laughs> I remember what she's saying. And I could see you counting. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm trying to count to 10, but it's not working. <laughs> Yeah. And everyone else was like, lighten up, it's fine. Nobody would think that you would ever do that, but you knew. Well, because I kept a pretty good record, so I don't fart. You don't? Well, you were like, but do you maybe eight said, years old, nine you, years old. You disagree with what I just said. You don't. Well, you don't in public. I think you public. do. Everybody, everybody farts. You, you just don't let You can ask my it. friends, you can ask my boyfriend. Okay, no. They have no idea. Okay, that's only because they're not, they don't live with you full time. Wait until you and Mark go together and you go to the bathroom. 
Unless you're way far apart, sometimes you can hear things. Like, there's tricks. I'm telling you, there are tricks to never know someone farts. I know all the butt tricks. Honey, everybody farts. You would blow up if you didn't. No, I, I, I know all the butt tricks so no one knows. <laughs> I, have done, all the I have done research on this. Okay. Okay. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen. And did you know that most people fart when they're sleeping? I still Because your that. body relaxes. I still don't know. I think there's still some kind of control. Because like you would do other things in bed. We'd go in bed. We would well, no, you have more accidents. No. Your, when the air releases. I didn't say you pooped your bed. I said you farted in bed. There's a difference between letting your bowels go and farting. That's just air. <laughs> Sorry, guys. She's texting her boyfriend. I'm not here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm just letting you talk about that because ew. <laughs> you asked. Um, you already told me that they asked you that question because it's useless. She's not a beauty guru of any no. kind. No. So anything I've never taught her, she doesn't remember and does not use. <laughs> exactly, because I don't. I don't use your makeup or any of your skincare stuff. What is a weird habit of mine that no one would believe? Like today. Today, weird habit. I don't know. A weird habit of yours. Uh, you have a weird habit of not eating. Is that a habit? Has that become a habit? Mm-hmm. It's not weird. Um, it's normal. No, most people eat. I eat, just not every day. <laughs> Let's see. What other weird habits do you have? I can you have weird one. habits of you only eat one thing at a time. Like, you can't intermix. You have to eat all of this and then this. No matter how cold that may get, you eat one thing at a time. To me, that's kind of a weird habit you do. You got a blueprint. If you're eating a, a, a normal meal, I don't like vegetables and I don't like meat. See, we eat that <laughs> crap first. And you're lactose intolerant, so your diet's like a fourth of what it should be. <laughs> I don't really care for most things that's like shellfish and chicken. I can't eat a lot of carbs anymore because a lot of carb based stuff like mac and cheese has cheese. And with cheese in it is my death. And I, vegetables or fruits and all that, are, they're okay, but like I would never pick them out of a bunch. But that's not a weird, that's so not like, a weird habit. But thing, no, you're you're finicky eating, it's not a weird No, habit. but I have the blueprint. So I'm like, okay, eat this stupid burger. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I have pickles and all that. Potato. <laughs> You you, a to me, it's weird that you only eat one thing at a time. No matter what it is, it's one thing at a time. You don't move to the next until that one thing is done. You don't intermix flavors at all. Mm -mm. To me, that's weird. <sighs> I thought the one I thought. I thought you were saying what other two. I don't remember. <sighs> you, have, you have a lot of things you can do. No, the fact that um, whenever I hear an illness, I initially think I have it. Oh, that is, that is weird. You, like, convince yourself. You will hear something, whether you read it or whatever, and then you automatically have those symptoms. It's like brownie. They'll be your fine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I... I said this is you're like dying. Mom to herself die of laughter. Um so yeah. That well, to me is kinda weird. That's why sometimes I've I wonder like I've always claimed to be allergic to birth control. And I'm like, was I allergic to birth control or did I read the packaging and think, uh oh. Yeah, you have that. I know. I'm telling you, your stepfather is the same way. That's why he's so paranoid about stuff. Because he hears something and he automatically assumes he's got it. That That's something. I don't know if that's a habit, though. Or if that's just something your brain plays tricks on. But the thing is, not just with, with illnesses. Someone can talk. I can hear on the news that West Africa had a, an earthquake and all of a sudden all the floor shaking underneath me. 
it's psychosomatic. You've got very much psychosomatic going on. I, I, I know that about you. I can hear that an alien that an alien thing happened in the movie two thousand years ago and also I was a UFO and really an airplane. Well and you heard through the pandemic people were dying and you swear to God we're all gonna die. We're well, all I gonna be dead that. before the end of twenty twenty. I still think that, that we're not gonna get out of alive. Something's gonna kill us in the meantime. At first I was a kid, I thought it was AIDS. Then I got older I thought it was cancer. That's why now it's COVID. <laughs> now that's why we have to protect your little ears from hearing and seeing things. I said, I'll watch a cartoon. That's crazy. I watched Spongebob, an alien invasion happening in Spongebob. I looked up at the sky. It was an airplane with lights flashing. I thought it was a UFO. That's, it's psychosomatic with you. It, that is one of your quirks. I started listening to Hippy Dippy on TikTok. <laughs> Hippy Dippy. Oh, Hippy Dippy. On TikTok. She's, she has Tourette's. I notice sometimes, like, I have that, that weird, like, they say someone's walking more than just twitching, though. You do say someone's walking over your grave or something like that. I get that, and I do that like, sometimes, and I'm like, I have to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a really quirky yours. So don't tell me. I didn't even think about that type of thing. I knew that was going on with you, but I didn't know that it was a quirky thing. I just thought that's well because it started when I was a kid. Someone was saying spider, and I'm like, me, I'm not. We're good. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think if you have any weird habits I can, like, expose you on. But you really are too normal. Uh, um, is that a weird habit? That's a habit I've done since I was an infant. She sucks on her- And I still do it. She sucks on her tongue. That sounds so weird. Do you want to explain that more? That's it. I actually suck my tongue instead of my thumb and my fingers as a baby. I suck my tongue. And I still do it today to soothe myself. When I'm tired, I tried when I'm sick. I've tried to do that, try to figure out how you do that. A lot of people try to do it and they can't. My, my tongue gets stuck. <laughs> I never had to have a pacifier because I would do that. I tend to spit on my tongue like, like um, if you could go back and rename me, what would you name me? Probably Mackenzie Marie. But you still love my name. I love the name. Yes. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I will I heard that when <laughs> when one of your cousins was oh, like nine or ten and she was doing soccer and she had a friend on her team with your name and I fell in love with it. That was the first time I ever heard it. I love your name. Mm-hmm. Love it. But if I had to change it, if I had to go back, or if I had, like if I ever got to have another little girl, I would have probably named her Mackenzie. And out of the two boy names you had, which one do you think it was? Uh, Jacob Daniel. I hate the name. No offense to any Daniels out there. One of my good friends is named Daniel. I don't like the name Daniel. It just, it, to me, it's like Daniel. I like the Daniel, Jacob, Jan- like Daniel. Jacob Daniel or Caleb. <laughs> I love the name Caleb, too. I do, too. Um, yeah. I guess if I had to go back and I got to choose my own name. Oh, have mercy. <laughs> As a kid, I wanted to name Christine. Or crystal as a kid, that was kind of thing I wanted. I think now I'd go back and I'd do like a really hippie, stupid name like Ocean or no. Blue or something like really stupid. No, like Skylar. Ooh, I like the name Skylar. Um, call me Tiffany. <laughs> I really, I exactly. really like the name, your name, and I really love the name Mackenzie, and I love your ch- your little girl's name when you have a baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, my boyfriend and I have kind of gone over baby names. And I already told her, and I told my mom, and I told him that I want to do a namesake for my mom. And if I have a boy, I initially thought I would name him Austin due to an obsession that I had when I was younger. And I still I know, I know, still want to keep the name Austin, but I figured Caleb Austin. I like that. It but flows. I like the little girl's name even more. I, when I was a kid, like, high, like middle school, I thought I would name my daughter Aurora. Again, back no. to the obsession that I had at the time. Now, growing up, I've also liked the name Zaya, and also the name Mariah. I love that name Zaya. And I also like the name Mariah, and I was going back and forth. Zariah. So I thought Zariah. That's like perfect mix of the two names. Zariah Ann would just be a very interesting I love one. that name. That would be awesome. Because Maya. I knew a girl, her name was Denisha. Denisha? That would be kind of really pretty too. But I love yeah. the name Mackenzie and I love your name. As you said, he would literally have named me Eminem. M M M. 
Mm. <laughs> um, when you guys go out to eat, what is her food and slash drink order all the time? You? Yes. French fries. <laughs> what I don't. And do. your your drink is very. Sometimes you go with Sprite. Most of the time, strawberry lemonade, uh, freckled lemonade. Um, you do happen to love bar trip beer, but you I don't do. get it a lot because a lot of people don't sell it. Yeah. Sell it. So I would say probably your more go to anymore would be a strawberry lemonade. I'm trying to reduce and my French fries. I'm sure it's going to become one big French fry. I try to reduce. I'm trying to reduce my my intake of caffeine. But I don't like the taste of water, so I really just don't drink anything most of the time. Yeah. Well, you drink a lot of lemonades. I don't drink. I drink a lot of tea. Lemonades. I drink a lot of tea too. Yeah. Yeah. I like coffee on occasion. Sprite, you really like Sprite. You used to always drink Sprite. Yeah, I still have a case of Sprite there. Yeah. Your go-to order is anything diet. Diet Pepsi, Diet Coke, Diet Root Beer, Diet Root Pepper. Diet. Mm-hmm. It has to be diet. It has to be diet. Um, you get tired of french fries quite often. I do. I'm not you, for sure. I can eat french fries ten times a day and not Mine, I think it depends on what restaurant I go to. Well, I feel like my main course is always different. Because i got to make sure it fits within all my dietary needs. It can't right. be, I can't have meat because that is that's chicken or seafood. Well, if you go to ready, certain ready restaurants, meats. like there's only one restaurant that serves the wonton taco, and I will get that every time. I mm-hmm. love Applebee's. that. Applebee's. Yeah, I love wonton tacos. Yum. I, I just, I don't like red meat, so like steaks, burgers, all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Grosses me out. It's like, bleh. bacon. And it started with bacon. Bacon is not beef. Bacon is pork. It started with bacon. I was, and I was probably about 13. I really stopped liking the taste of bacon. And I it slowly bacon. has just progressed. I love bacon. Then they went mm. to like pork chops. Then they went to like all these other random meats. And then hamburger really became a problem. It just slowly progressed. And I started hating different kinds of meats. And I'm like, this isn't tasty. Yeah, all anymore. you ever eat anymore now is it's chicken. Seafood and chicken. I eat chicken and then shellfish. So I'm like fish. Fish, fish. It's too fishy. It is just gross. Because fish is fish. Fish is gross. Fish are friends. Fish are friends, not food. And I stand by that because fish are disgustingly badly tasted. I love cod and I love halibut. Mm. But I like shellfish. I love crab, oyster. I like crab. Is it oyster? Oh. Squid, octopus. I like, yeah, I like those. Clams. I like those. Mussels. Yeah. Sea urchin. It's slimy. Sea urchin is so good. It's like a sweet, buttery. I've never had it. <laughs> Mussels and oysters, they make me gag. Really? But they're like slimy and gritty and just. The you have them fresh? Thing. Like freshly off of the I've ice? I've had them off of your uncle's plate, and that's his <laughs> <best> thing. <laughs> he goes here, just try it. And my gag is like, like poor the little girl, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, no. No, I don't know. Yeah. I get sushi a lot because I like rice. I like I like sushi and I like sashimi. I like that sashimi. Sh- yeah, but don't give me no oyster or mussel. I like shrimp. Disgusting. I like shrimp if it's done correctly. I love done. crab. But I also like halibut and I also like cod. And mm-hmm. I don't mind. I also katsu. like hamburger and I. I don't like. Mind, I don't mind katsu. It's an abalone katsu sand. It's an abalone katsu, which is a form of fish, but it has a texture and taste almost like a, like a fried chicken. Huh. It's really good. It's more popular in Australia, but they sell them seafood restaurants sell it. Um, so that's really, really good. But uh, yeah, I'm not a meat. I don't really care for veggies. Um, uh, I don't really care for veggies very much. I mean, it varies on the vegetable and on the fruit. I know. Um, I love you Trader Joe's. I don't do veggies at all. I do. I like salad. Mm, to a degree. I just don't like... I don't, there's certain vegetables I don't like. I like it overall. Like, I love cucumbers. I love broccoli. I like carrots. But these things cooked <laughs> are gross. I don't like zucchini. I hate zucchini. I hate like Yum. cabbage. Cabbage, zucchini, to me are gross. I've learned to love pickles. Yeah, I used to hate those things. Now I eat them by the jarful. <laughs> yeah, I used to hate I pickles. don't like mushrooms. You don't I, like tomatoes. I can live with olives. So it's like, I like certain things. I like fruit. You, I don't, you don't like green beans. You don't like beans. I like green beans. I like green beans. I love green beans. 
He was she was with the wrong kind of Indians. Oh, oh. She could see the whole juicy foul. No, no, no. The French cut with light oil. Oil on green beans? Yeah, they, they, they don't put it in all whatever juice you have when yours in. It's in a light oil base, so it's not so... Mine's not in juice. Mine's in butter. I cook it with butter. No, in the can. Okay, I don't put those in the That's why you get the French... That's why you get a the French cut. The French ones have it too, and you have to just drain them. It's like I do the other ones. You just don't like them because you don't like green beans. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just, my order has come down to just potatoes. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I <laughs> miss, I just kind of starve in this house. Because <laughs> mom's a carnivore. My dad's very into veggies, and I'm like, huh. and you two, I'm starving to death. Yeah. Mom's like, eat. I'm like, there's nothing in this house. You like the whole microwave effect. <laughs> she, they're like, eat, eat. And I'm like, there's nothing in this house I can eat. Well, there is. Every, I can't eat acidic food because of my acid. I have my stomach's overly acidy and it's like, it burns a hole in my stomach. I can't eat anything too sour for the same reason. I can't eat dairy. Okay, I can't listen. like meat. Listen, you Limited. can eat what's in your freezer except for the hot part. I'm, I can't even do gluten eat or carby because it hurts. Okay, but you have your popcorn chicken that you can eat. Popcorn dogs. We buy you vegan pizza. Yeah. We buy organic corn, corn dogs. dogs. I know, and it's just like, yeah, I'm limited here. <laughs> you are limited, I agree. And it really stinks. Um. Okay, next question. What is one thing you wish I would learn to drive. I have no idea. <laughs> how to not spend money. How to be a little bit more money conscious. Be more you know how to spend money. I wish you could learn how to stop spending money. <laughs> be a little bit more frugal. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't spend that much money. Not now. Before, you would go to I mean, probably $200 a day or more. Says so the like, girl. Are really... Says so the girl who just spent almost $60 on a one ounce bottle of perfume. Exactly. See, you just spend so much money. But like some of my big name items, like my Oculus, which by the way, thank you so much, Samantha, for my Oculus. <laughs> um, I didn't spend the money on. Uh, what's something that I do that annoys you? Everything. Not everything. Sleeping until noon. Really we debate on that so much. Because she's like, you need to be more productive. I can be productive than noon. Like, you are five. <laughs> and when the difference is, I'm not cranky when I wake up. <laughs> I can be just as productive I, as at midnight as you are when you wake up in the morning. The fact that you stay in your room too long, all the time, so much, that really kind of annoys me. So I'd like you to come out there with me, but I get it. It's the age. And it's it. the lack of interest into their stuff. Yeah. You like your, you like shows that I just don't like, and I like shows that you just don't like. True. And I don't think you want to see the, the, like, the, the, the lack of cleaning your room. I can't. Kind it's of annoys me. This is your controlled chaos. Yeah. It's controlled and chaos. And it's okay, though. It really is controlled chaos. We, we can't, you can't be who what I want you to be all the time, just like I can't be who you want to be all the time. I just, I, I okay. clean, clean, I feel like when my room's clean, it gives me more anxiety, because I don't know where anything is. <laughs> Like I said, this is your controlled chaos. Except it doesn't look controlled to me. <laughs> when you guys clean my room and I come in my room and I'm like, where's all my stuff? Be like, they haven't even reached out yet. Um, so I mean rude. <laughs> you guys did very well when I left for a few of that one month for California and you and my cousin cleaned my bedroom, which I appreciated heavily. But then I felt like I didn't know where anything was because even though you might say this is chaos, if you ask me, where's your friendship bracelet with Jessica? Well, it's on that shelf underneath the, the water bottle, underneath the mask, right there beside the gum, kind of underneath that shelf. You might be like, that's just a mess. No, that's exactly where I put it. <laughs> it's not in a drawer somewhere, somewhere else. I can't remember. This is a safe place. Never seen it again. But on the floor, it's like, oh, there's another sock. Okay. Touche. Um, what's something that I obsess over that you think is funny or just not normal? That you obsess over now? You can stay in general. 
Um, and then, and then it's continued from childhood. That's still going on. I think you use obsess over Mr. Lynch. Over people. People, yeah. Because it wasn't just Ross. It was also Debbie Ryan. It was also uh, Shane. It was also Lily. It was also... Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have an obsession for people. I didn't like her personality, and I wanted to find a reason to not be mean. Well, I don't like that idea, but okay. But then things changed. I don't like your obsession for not eating. Is that really an obsession? Yeah. Or just a bad diet because I can't eat anything. No, I think it's become an obsession. Yep. Well, you see results. You um, have obsessions for the Celsius drinks. You have an obsession for shopping, clothes. I have an emotional attachment to clothes. As an obsession. It's an addiction. You can't stop. You have so many clothes and you just have to go out and buy new clothes all the time. I'm obsessed with pajamas. Oh, you are for sure. <laughs> you have more pajamas than I have regular clothing. I have pajamas and shoes. Yes. <laughs> you cleaned out all that and look at it's already re- really, really cold. Yeah. I'm obsessed with my boyfriend. You are. But that's a good obsession. And my friend Brooke. That's a good obsession. You're not. You're obsessed with soda. Yes, yes, I am. I'm addicted to soda. <laughs> I think I'm obsessed with being cold because I live with a fan. But are you obsessed with being cold or are you just always hot and you need to cool down? Yes. <laughs> there, there is a difference. That's I think I'm different. also obsessed with candles. That's just a comfort level. Candles and perfume. I'm obsessed with smelling good. You're definitely obsessed with perfume. Your candle's not my, obsessed anymore. My teeth. I'm obsessed with like brushing my teeth. You're also obsessed with uh, your soaps. Yeah. And my you're mugs. We have obsession for body baths. Yeah. And my my mugs. My cups. Yeah. My tumbler. You have a lot of obsession. I'm obsessed with smelling good. Because I'm always brushing my teeth, showering. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get lazy. That's a good obsession. I wear a fix in oral care. That's a good obsession. Bad teeth gross me out. There's a reason behind it. Like, an actual reason. Okay. But it's called I'm lazy and just didn't want to brush my teeth. You're gross. And you know what everyone brushes their teeth wrong? Everybody. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to floss. You're supposed to rinse your mouth out with, like, an alcohol-based, like, Listerine. Floss. Brush. Whiten. Floss rinse with the stream or something like that. No water, because that water just deteriorates it. It's no purpose. And you should not eat for at least 30 minutes after. Eat or drink 30 minutes after. Let all that set in. And if you brush your teeth at night, you shouldn't be eating or drinking anyways after that, because it's telling your palate to stop. And you refresh it again for the morning. And you should never brush your teeth after you eat. Because if you eat breakfast and then brush your teeth, You've already released all the bacteria that was in your mouth from the night prior, and it's too comfortable to even brush your teeth in the first place. Brush your teeth, wait 30 minutes, and then have breakfast if on the go, because at least then you're killing the bacteria that causes plaque buildup and all of that. Huh. Um, we're almost done these questions. We're close to the hour mark. We're so close, guys. Thanks so much for joining and sticking around. Uh, when were you the most proud of me? I've been proud of you on many a things, but the most recent was when you won the Mosaic Award. That was awesome. Your okay. GPA was above average. Yes, it still is. But you also obsessed over homework day in and day out. Still do. <laughs> so that was the most recent. But I think I've been proud of you when you did your YouTube and you made a career, when you got your first paycheck, when you got your first job, even though it was a not a good one. Things suck, but... Mm. But I was still proud of you. Your first job interview and you nailed it. When I graduated high school. When you graduated high school, that was a highlight of my day. <laughs> when you saw that I no longer had disability anymore. When you when you flew for the first time by yourself with nobody. That those are proud moments. Those are things you should be proud of. I think you were proud of me when I stayed in my bedroom for the first time. Oh yeah, when you were yes. When you have to step in your own room all night. Now she's like, come out of your room. I'm sorry, yeah. I touched you. That point on, you never come out. <laughs> um, yeah. There's a lot of many proud moments. I think meeting my boyfriend, she was proud. Yes, excited. Because I was very shallow and vain before I met my boyfriend. 
I think he's brought you out of your shell. I still am pretty shallow and vain. <sighs> you always tell me that I'm just much. You always tell me to talk to moms. Oh, you're so vain. I'm like, no, it's called looking nice. <laughs> Yeah, and that's only because you want to stand in front of the mirror and look at yourself. That's vain. Because I notice my outfit's messed up. And you're like, you look fine. I'm like, my shirt is halfway up my boob. No, <laughs> it's never that bad. Sometimes you're like, oh, I just don't like the way this looks. Or the way this it doesn't. That's vain. Because you I don't. look just fine. No. You might fine when you look out? Yes, they'll look fine. My roll is starting to pop out. That's a problem. <laughs> okay. The so extra, really the extra large fry is coming out from last <laughs> week. I gotta put that. My we'll button, we'll agree to this my story. button jeans hold a lot of fluff. <laughs> um, what's your when you think of a favorite moment together? What's the first one that pops in your head? Probably wrestling, the concert. Mm. That was a pretty amazing so, memory. So give some details so you guys are like my first oh. memory of you that I absolutely loved is your birth. You were so drugged up though. No, I had new cesarean. So you were so drugged up. The point is, is that when I first saw you. When I first opened my eyes and was able to see you, that was my, my biggest awe of my whole world. What have I done to myself? No, I've never thought that. <laughs> Created a monster. No, I've never thought that either. Uh, but to get some context, you like a concert? What? So this concert we went to was for the former band known as R5. At this time, I am absolutely unhealthily obsessed with the lead singer, Ross Lynch. It was a stormy day. It was raining. We were there for over five hours in line because I was the because I was paranoid and had to be first in line. <laughs> and we um, finally got to the concert. We, everything was good. We were in our seats. The Redland came on and his DJ. The other band they had sponsored come on and played. Didn't care. I see Ross's face. I see the band, I went into pure ecstasy. Heaven. <laughs> Her eyes glassed over and it was all over. <laughs> that moment, that moment of glory. <laughs> and then she blubbered all the way home over excitement. <laughs> all the excitement just hit her. We were amazing. through easy love. I went up closer to the stage and Ross touched my hand for probably a point two seconds. But for me, it was like a lifetime. <laughs> my hand could that never. Was it. We're gonna get married. <laughs> I mean, it was a big deal. And the last question, because we're almost out of time, is how would you describe my perfect guy? Oh, I don't know. Uh, probably tall, dark hair, glasses, a little heavy, nerdy for sure. Mark. <laughs> I was going to do the same thing. Loving. Loving, caring, make, treat you like a queen. And he does. He does. He calls you gorgeous or beautiful every day. <laughs> <laughs> so who respects you and Terry and yes. family? That's important. But he makes you the happiest, and that's what I like him mm -hmm. My attitude completely flipped. He treats you really well. It's a difference. My mom can tell when I'm missing him because there's a, there's a tone in myself that she's like, you're yeah. missing your boyfriend, are you? I'm like, yes. And then yeah. he texts me, and it's like, you're in a good mood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can tell when he's texted you and when you haven't heard from him for a while. Like, you know, if he has rough days at work or whatever, he doesn't text you as often. And mm -hmm. you can definitely tell because you sink. But the second that phone goes off, you're all happy and bubbly and back to yourself again. Love makes you crazy. It does. I told you that a long time ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, this has been the first episode of Samantha. It's been weird. Different, for sure. Yeah. Miss her, huh? Yeah, a little bit. She's my employee, which is so crazy to say that as an employee. Um, but, you know. We have fun working together, and I appreciate you guys so much for joining us for 12 episodes. We've done like a dozen episodes. Wow. You're part of our dozenth episode. <laughs> uh, and next week we'll probably end up being Brooke. So, Sammy, when you listen to this with your daughter and all of that, go ahead. I'm giving, I'm giving you the time off to help take care of your mom. You have that time. It's totally fine. Um, my friend, Brooke, is, like, so ready to do this. <laughs> so, I'll do that with her. But thanks, you guys, for joining us on this hour there'll be no question and advice this week um and yeah i'll see you guys later on today for the vlog and tomorrow for a new video 
but 